Good evening. It's Thursday night church service. Let's uh, look to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to preach. Lord, I just ask right now, as your servant, that you would help us to have open hearts to receive your word. Lord, that we would be tender towards your voice, and the Holy Spirit would do a work in all of our lives. In Christ's name, amen. I want to read out of Revelation chapter 3. Beginning in verse 14, going through verse 21. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things which say them, Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. Jesus Christ speaking, he said, I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou were cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold or hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou, hast, because thou sayest, I am rich, and increased with goods, and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched, and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked... I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eye slave, solve, with eye solve, that thou mayest see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. To him that overcometh, I will grant. To him that overcometh, will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. Using verse 20 as my text this evening, it said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come to him and will sup with him and he with me. I will come into him and sup with him and he with me. And with the help of the Lord, for a little while I want to preach using the title, Sup with Jesus. Sup with Jesus. In America, the typical meals are breakfast, lunch, and dinner, or you could say supper. Of these three different, of these three different ones may vary as to which one is the most important. Breakfast, some may say, it gives you the energy to get your day started, to break from your fast from the previous night. Some may say breakfast is the most important, the most nutritious. Some may say that lunchtime is because it's a time to regroup, a time maybe even for a siesta, a cat nap, to recharge, sort of like Thursday evening service. It's a recharge service. It is a time to recharge, to refocus, to get the boost or the energy, the fortitude to push through to the end of the week or to, and to be able to call this week a success. So some may even say that lunch is the most important meal of the day. Then you have dinner, or in, or in some parts of the country, it's called supper. Supper is a time that the family comes together. The day is spent. The tasks are all good, are all as good as they're going to get. They're all as good done as they're going to be uh, completed. Everyone is winding down. This is the time when the children are able to tell mom and dad all about their day. The good things, the accomplishments, and even the not so good things that happen in their day. The notes from the teacher come out, whether good reports or bad reports. This is the time a child shares what's on their heart and the desires that they might have. You know, that new bicycle that little Bobby may have 
gotten, just, just brand new, that his parents had given to him in that day. Or even a Barbie that little Susie got, that the, that the daughter may want one of their own, or the son may want one of his own, a bicycle. It is a time where mom takes the time to update dad on the family affairs. She is, after all, the general that's running things while dad is hard at work. Mom updating dad on who's who and what's what. The time the family discusses upcoming events, vacations, special occasions that are going to be coming in each one of their lives. A time that the kids try to persuade mom and dad to side with them when it's coming to making a family decision. It is a time that dad handles all of the above and he finally gives his final say on all matters. This is, to me, the most important dinner, the most important meal that you can have. Breakfast has its own place. Lunch sure has its own wins. But dinner is where the whole family comes together. Together, This is called quality time. And it is the most important of the day. In our Bible text, the word sup is to dine. But if you look further into that word, the principle, it is to dine, but it is to, it is to eat the, princ the, the principal meal, which is the chief meal. Usually, it says, at evening, the end of the day. And Jesus Christ when he used this word sup, I don't believe that he was just using the next upcoming meal or the most uh, convenient time that was going to be eat that it was time to be that it was time to eat, but he was speaking of quality time. He was speaking of a a time where he could spend with you that was important. If you are willing to open up your heart to Jesus Christ, he will not only come in but he will spend quality time with you. He said, I will come into you and you will, and I will sup with you and you with me. This is the most important of all meals at this time. Jesus said, if any, if any, meaning hear my voice, if any hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and sup with him. Jesus Christ was extending an invitation to allow God to come into your life. Today, people need to invite Christ into their life. They need to invite Christ into whatever situation they have that's uh, in their life. Whatever circumstances begin to arise, it is a great thing to call on Jesus and allow him into that part of your life. To sup with Christ is to be that child who is bringing his or her day's events to his father or to her daddy. This is a time when you sup with Christ. It is being that child that says, Daddy, this is what's going on in my life. Father, this is where I'm at in my life. God, this is the guidance. I need you to guide me on these things in my life. This is a time where you as a child of God, can unload. Not just for the sake of unloading or bad-mouthing someone, but for his guidance. This is where you get the how to handle the situation when you come face-to-face -face with it next time. Whether that, uh, that is tomorrow or next week or, or the next time that you face your situation, you have spent time with the Lord. And He, as a Father, has directed you. Jesus was speaking to the Apostle John. He was giving him instruction of what to write to the church. In particular, he was writing to the church in Laodicea. And he declared he knew their works, that they were not hot or cold, that they were, they were, not, they were not idle for God, but that they were just idle for God. I'm sorry. 
But they most definitely were not on fire for God. He said that, he said, I would, I'd rather you be hot on fire for him or cold. Because to be lukewarm, he said he would just spew you out. Thinking about dinner for a moment. When you come to the dinner table and the food is hot and the steam is coming off the top of it, you can, and the mom may even say, be careful, that just came out of the oven. It is, without a doubt, we've all tried to eat it because having hot food was the best. Having cold, not so good. Uh, I won't say who, but uh, the other day when the brother was uh, eating, eating something cold, I looked at his, looked at his uh, plate there on the table, and I could tell that the food was, was really gathered together. It didn't have any smoothness to it. And I asked him, I said, are you eating cold food? His reply to me was, yes, because I'll, I'll eat less food. He was using it as a, as a deterrent to eat. So pointing to the fact that we all want something that's hot, something that's, uh, that's, something that's going to be good to taste, not something cold. And Christ said, if it appears to have a good look to it, but it is just lukewarm, it would be something that he would spew out, something that's not good. Jesus Christ said it would be better for them to be all in or not in at all. To be partially in some of the time is not profitable. He was not going to allow them in the church to be spiritually deceived. Think about it for a minute. What a, what a disappointing revelation it would be after it is too late. Getting out there into eternity... And then finding out that you were not what you thought you were. But I, I sincerely don't think that people are fooling themselves. We know, you know, if things are good between you and God or not. Don't fool yourself by telling yourself a lie that things are good when we know or you know that they are not. You're better off knowing the truth. Because to be lukewarm is dangerous. Because it grants a false sense of security. Because you think everything is all right. You get comfortable with being lukewarm. You, you become complacent in your walk with God. And before you know it, you're absolutely cold. Sitting in a pew, or in our case, sitting in a chair, trying to figure out where or when did your fire go out. These things were declared, Jesus Christ saying, they declared to themselves. They said, I am rich. I am increased with goods. I have need of nothing. But Jesus Christ replied, or saying in replying to this, that they were wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. Sure, physically you can, you can be filthy rich. You can have the things that this world or even your world has to offer to you. And sure, you don't need anything whatsoever. You may not need anything. But these things don't bring eternal satisfaction. These don't bring a satisfaction to mankind's soul. And Jesus, Jesus said to have all these comforts and be spiritually naked, poor, and blind, he said that you are wretched and miserable. To be miserable, thinking that I go to church, but things are not good between me and God. To be miserable, to be poor, and not be rich divinely. But Jesus said, this is something that really caught my attention in this whole Bible setting. Jesus said, I counsel thee. Supping with Jesus is the title. 
spending that quality time with the Savior. Jesus said, I counseled thee, meaning I'm going to give you a suggestion. I'm going to give you a way of doing things. I'm going to give you something that can help you overcome anything and help you be an overcomer, as he said in the very end here. I'm going to counsel thee what you ought to do, for you know not what to do. And at times you don't even know what you ought to even pray for. Sometimes we don't know what's good for us. However, Jesus Christ does. Amen? This is what you should do. He said, buy of me. He didn't say go to another source. He didn't say go down the street to what you can get. He didn't say to go down to the local liquor store. He didn't say to go down to the the prostitute house. But Jesus said, buy from me. And he said, buy from me gold that was tried in the fire. In Psalm chapter 18, verse 30, he says, As for God, his way is perfect. The the word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all those that trust in him. And in Proverbs chapter 30, verse 5, he says, Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. Amen? We've got to trust in God. We've got to make God our buckler. We've got to understand that God's word has been tried and tested and it's true it's withstood all the test of time the salvation that Jesus Christ has the life that Christ has lived the love in him is tried and tested it is helped So many people in this world. In this salvation, you have become rich. Amen? Maybe you don't have all the dollars and and, uh, uh, Benjamins in your pockets that you may want. However, we've become rich, divinely rich. Clothed. Clothed with the salvation that the blood of the Lamb has provided. It's pure without any blemish without any spot to be covered with the righteousness and holiness of the almighty no longer to be ashamed of who you are because your sin is no longer in existence when you accept jesus christ as your savior the shame of who you used to be of the things of the past There's no longer any shame there because it turns into thankfulness and gratitude that Jesus Christ has washed it all away for you. Your shame is a thing of the past if Jesus Christ is your Lord. Your shame is a thing of the past if Jesus Christ has cleansed you and your past life, of your past life. Your shame is a thing of the past. If Jesus Christ has washed washed you with and poured out his blood upon your soul. And if these things are true, and if this has happened, then why do you, do you allow your mind to wander? Paul said this. He said, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And looking at that for a minute, to the pulling down of strongholds. Anything that holds you, anything that uh, that binds you, anything that that tries to captivate your mind and your soul, you can say, because of Jesus Christ, all these things can be pulled down. Why? Because Christ is the mighty one. Christ is the one. And our warfare, our weapons, are not in this carnal world, but God. God is the one that fights our battles. He said, casting down imaginations. Imaginations, they take place right up here in our minds. This is where the battles are fought for so many people that, that 
uh, they look down on themselves. They have shame. They look into their past life, and they and all they do is continuously look at who they used to be. Instead of looking at who you used to be, start looking at what you are today in Jesus Christ. Amen. We can look at what we used to be, and God looks at us for who we are today. Stop looking at yourself through the eyes of shame of the past. Start seeing yourself through the eyes of God with the blood applied to your life that Jesus Christ has provided for you. He said, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bring into captivity... So these imaginations that take place in your mind, he said, bringing into captivity every thought, not unto your own power or your own might or your own ability, but bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. He says, and having in, in, a, in a readiness to revenge all disobedience, when your obedience is fulfilled. Stop being disobedient to the word of God. And allowing yourself to see you as what you used to be. If you are a new creature. If you are brand new. If all sin has been washed away from you. Then stop seeing yourself as that person that brought shame. Stop being obedient to the thoughts and evil suggestions and become obedient to God's word. When you invite Christ into your exist existence, you are not hearing the voice of the devil. You don't have to give him the time of day. When you, bring, when you invite Christ into your existence... It is the voice of God that you listen to. My text, I said that, it said that Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. There he is knocking. And if anyone, if any man, if, if any hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and him with me. These are the things. In verse 17 and 18. Divine riches, white garments, and sight. Are in verse 18. And they correspond to the last three uh, Adjectives that are written in verse 17. Being poor, naked, and blind. This, this church here, in Laodicea, thought it needed nothing. But in all actuality, it was destitute of all the barest necessities of spiritual life. The gospel is divine riches for our spiritual poverty. The white robe of righteousness for our sin. And the spiritual sight for our blindness. Jesus Christ continued. And in verse 19 he said, As, as, as many as I love. And this, is, this, was, this word love was not agape, agape love but rather filial love. And going back to the introduction of the most important meal of the day, being there at dinner time, and spending that time with your father, spending that time with your family, spending that time, that most cherished time to come together, it shows, it's showing God's tender and mercy, or God's tenderness, and mercy towards his family. A father at times is harsh, but a good father knows 
that his children also need the tender emotional connection. Jesus Christ also said that he rebukes, which is to convict. And he chastens, which literally means to raise up a child. If you open the door of your life to Jesus Christ, he will reside with you. But he also says to the overcomer of sin, to him that overcometh, will I grant to sit with me in my throne, Jesus Christ said. So we have a place in his throne. Even as I overcame, Christ said, and am set down with my Father in his throne. So when we overcome and we get to the place where we are doing right by God and living according to the way that the Word of God tells us to live and being sure that God has saved me, God has cleansed me, and now I'm on my way to heaven. The devil can't lie to you anymore when you start living that way. I got saved. It wasn't any of my own doing. I asked Christ to save me. I asked him to cleanse me. I asked him to come into my life. And because of that, and because I believe that he's the son of God, and he died on the cross and rose from the grave for me, for me, I'm on my way to heaven. And nobody and nothing can alter that other than me. God is even bound by his word that if I accept his son Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, I've got to go to heaven. I'm the only one that can alter that. So don't be lukewarm. Be on fire for God. Speaking about supping with Jesus. Having that time, that quality time with God. Father, I preach what you laid upon my heart. And God, now I just pray and ask that the words find a lodging place in each and every heart. Each and every mind. That it would draw them closer to you. And bring them to the point of hearing your voice, hearing that knock on the door of their heart, and God coming to the door and surrendering by opening and allowing you to come in. Father, we thank you for all that you're accomplishing and doing, and Lord, we look forward to what you're going to continue to do and bless in Christ's name. Amen. We'll be in church Saturday night, 730. Look forward to... Uh, being in touch with you and just uh, worshiping God with you. God bless.